Hey everybody, welcome back. I'd like to share with you today a quick tech tip if you're using an X32 rack mixer. I recently had a minor problem with mine, which was that the clock stopped keeping accurate time. And this is a symptom of the internal battery getting depleted and needing replacement. It's a pretty simple operation. But when I looked across the internet quickly to try to find some technical information or some guidance, I couldn't find any. So I thought I would share with you my process in replacing the battery in an X32 rack. One of my complaints with Behringer is that they're not real forthcoming with service documentation. A lot of companies will post the service manuals right on their website, and I think that's really a great service to customers. But with Behringer, they suggest that you send the equipment into an authorized service center and sending my mixer in to a service center just to get the battery replaced seemed a little excessive to me. So I tore into it myself and figured it out and I'd like to share that with you. Now I know I probably should be showing you the inside of the mixer in this video but since I'm using the mixer to produce this video that's a little inconvenient and this is really quite a simple process so I think I can just walk you through it. What you need to do to replace the battery in your X32 rack is first put the rack unit onto your bench and remove the screws that are on the top and you'll find a handful of small Phillips screws that secure the top cover on so pull all those guys off and remove the top cover. After you've got the top cover removed if you're facing the mixer with the control panel toward you, you'll see over on the left-hand side rear, the microphone input boards, the preamp boards. And incidentally, these appear to be the exact same preamp boards that are used in the larger console version of the board. The battery that you need to access is underneath those boards. And so to get to it, we need to pull those boards aside so we can get down to the bottom of the machine where the battery is located. You'll notice that there is a ribbon cable that goes from the bottom of the machine up along the side on top of those boards and over to the output board on the right hand side of the rear of the machine. And this is a ribbon cable that can be detached from the output board via a zero force connector. So just Follow that cable over to the output board and on the edges of the cable, on the connector, you'll see that there are a couple of little catches that you can catch with your fingernail and just pull them gently away from the board and the cable will release. And it shouldn't require any force at all. You should be able to just pull that cable right out of the connector and set it aside. Now it's going to be important that we put that cable back into the connector and the proper orientation. So take a quick note as to which way the cable is inserted into the connector. Oftentimes what I'll do when I'm working on equipment like this is I'll take my camera and take a series of photographs of the detail of all the things I'm going to work on. So if there's any question when it comes time to reassemble, I can refer back to those photos and see the way it was set up originally. So we're going to pull that cable out of the way. Now we need to get the microphone input boards out of our way. And in order to move them, what we need to do is to go to the back of the unit on the back panel, and you'll see there's 16 microphone input jacks, XLR connectors. Each one of those connectors has two screws holding it to the back of the unit, and we need to remove those screws. So you're going to grab the screwdriver and remove 32 screws that are holding all of those XLR connectors on. Those XLR connectors secure the back side of the preamp board to the chassis. Then once you've done that, you can look on top of the machine again and you'll see the preamp board with all those connectors that you just loosened up. And there are two screws near the front of the machine in the corner of the board that hold the board in place. So remove those two screws and now you can pick up the entire preamp board and wiggle it just gently and slide it out of the back of the case. So you pull all those XLR connectors into the case and then you can 
just gently flip the board upside down and out of the way. There are some other wires that are attached to the board, but I have plenty of cable room in my machine, so I didn't have to remove any of those connectors. I was able just to pull the board out of its location and flip it aside so that I had clearance. And then you'll see that there's another preamp board, identical to the top one, right underneath the one you just moved. And in the place where those two screws are that you pulled off, there are two standoffs. So we're making a sandwich of boards. So just um, unscrew those standoffs, and then the second board underneath the first one will be free. And again, you can just slightly pull it into the chassis and flip it over and get it out of the way. Now, after you've pulled the second preamp board out of the way, you will see that there's one more board down in the bottom of the chassis, which is the computer board for the X32 mixer. And it's covered with a metal covering, which helps prevent any kind of radio interference that's coming off of the computer board from getting picked up by the sensitive microphone preamps above it. We need to remove that cover by pulling off some screws, which are in its corners. And so pull out the screws, gently remove the metal cover and set it aside, and then you will see the battery, which is on that lowest board. If the battery is about in the uh, middle of the machine. And so all we need to do is to push on that battery toward the back of the battery connector a little bit and it will release. And it's a standard 2032 watch battery. So put a fresh battery in it and then reassemble the machine in the reverse order. So put the metal plate back on, put the two microphone preamp boards back in place, reconnect that top cable that we uh, originally disconnected, which goes to the output board by inserting it into its connector and then pushing the little locks on either side of the cable down to lock the cable in place. Make sure it's in there nice and straight and square. And um, reinstall all of the screws that are holding the boards in place and those XLR connectors, and you should be good to go. But one thing is that the settings on the board, your various mixer scenes and other setup configuration should not be disturbed by the battery change. I believe all of that is held in non-volatile memory and it doesn't require the battery to be in place to save those settings. So you shouldn't lose any settings. But after replacing the battery in the mixer, now your real-time clock should keep proper time. This is a pretty simple procedure. There's a lot of screws to remove, but it's not very difficult. And I think it took me about 30 minutes in total to do the whole task. And I was pretty methodical and pretty careful in doing it. So if you're using an X32 rack and your clock is not keeping accurate time, chances are it just needs a fresh battery and that's the procedure to do it. It's not that difficult, you can do it. So, I hope that's helpful to you if you have an X32 rack. Like I mentioned, I couldn't find much information on the internet about this procedure, and um, so I thought I'd share the video with you and share that tip. Thanks for tuning in, and if you like the tech tips, I do uh, hope you subscribe, I hope you thumb up the video, and I hope to see you again on another episode. Thanks so much.